Hey y'all, Melissa here with you today, and today I'm continuing my series of hacks to my Esma top pattern. What I'm going to show you today is how to take a pattern that is cut on the center front fold, like the one I'm wearing, although this is my shoreline boat neck, and make a button placket for it. So while I'm showing you how to do this on the Esma pattern, you could do it on the shoreline boat neck, or any pattern that is cut on the center front fold. So let's see how to do it. Let's look at the pattern alterations we'll need to make. So this is for my Esma top that I'm going to be stitching up. And I chose this one because it has a V neckline. While you can do this on any neckline, it is sometimes confusing what it looks like on a V neckline. So that's why I chose this one. So the first thing you want to do is determine, um, because this is cut on a fold, you want to add a seam allowance. Okay, so we'll pretend that's a seam allowance there because this is a quarter scale model that I'm working with. And then you need to also determine the amount of overlap that you're going to want in the front of the shirt. So add the seam allowance plus the amount of overlap you're going to want. And I will just draw a line here. At the bottom on the hem, it's pretty easy. You just want to continue right on over. And then on the neckline here, you actually want to kind of continue the V. I know this sort of doesn't seem like it should work, but you'll see this will. So that extension I want to add to the front of my pattern. And now instead of cutting on the fold, I'm going to cut two front pieces. You also need to make a facing for this. So on this particular pattern, the facing is um, one and three quarters for the back neckline. And I want to match that facing for this whole front neckline and button placket. So I'm going to draw out and I'm just going to mirror the edges of the pattern here. This clear ruler is really handy for this kind of work. So I do have this linked below in case you want the same one. So you can see this area here is the facing that I would cut out for this button front shirt. Let me show you what this looks like in actual fabric and how to sew it. So here is my shirt that I've cut out and I have finished everything except the neckline at this point um, and the hem because this facing is going to become part of the hem. So I'm going to push this aside and let's take a look at the facing that I created. So I added fusible interfacing to the wrong side of my facing piece. And then what I went ahead and did, and this is easier to see on the right side, I stitched half inch from the outer edge of the facing, so the edge furthest away from the neck and the front placket. And on that edge of the facing, I did a basting stitch at one half inch. Now, I did this because it gives me a really handy pressing guide to press that edge in. So this is pre-pressed and it will be easier to sew now when I'm ready to finish this facing. You can also see that at this corner here, it gave me a guideline to clip to that stitching line, but not through it, so that I could press the fabric in away from that cut there. And that's going to give me a nice clean finished edge. And when I'm done, I can remove the basting stitches, but since they're on the inside of the shirt, I probably won't. To attach this to the shirt, I'm just going to pin right sides together. So you want to match the shoulder seams, and you want to match the points. And we're going to be stitching on this neckline edge. bottom here. I'm actually going to stitch across at the one inch line. I'm going to start here, stitch across, and then go around the neckline and do the same thing at the bottom on the other side over here. You know, stop and then go over 
to the one inch mark. So it would be in and then all the way up and around and back down. I will be making sure that at these corners that I stop with the needle down and pivot. That's why I've put these pins in basically on a line from corner to corner because that will help me judge when my needle gets to that pin. That's where I need to stop and pivot. Here's what this looks like now that I'm done stitching. So before I turn, press, understitch, all of those things that go into sewing and neck facing, I am going to clip the corners and the curves. And I'm not going to go into all the understitching and those steps because I have a separate video just about neck facings that I will link below. If you don't know how to understitch, press, top stitch, all of those things, they are clarified in that video. And let me show you at the bottom down here how we are going to hem this. So I did stitch at one inch there. What I am going to do is turn this, and I will use my point turner to get in here, but it will be turned so that all of that facing just tucks in there. Okay, and you can see like at the bottom how that's tucked in. Then what I can do now with the remaining fabric, turn it under twice, and once I top stitch, I will have a nice corner here with all those raw edges tucked inside of the facing. I just want to point out one quick thing on this particular understitching. Because we have corners here, like we have this corner that I will push out more with my point turner and press, you cannot stitch all the way into those interior corners with your understitching on the facing. So just get as close as you can and um, as far as you can into that corner, as far as your presser foot will let you get, and then stop. It's okay if not all of it gets understitched. The same thing is going to happen down here in this interior corner. You're not going to be able to get the presser foot all the way down into that corner, so just do the best you can. Here is what the top looks like with the finished facing. You can see that I did leave the facing stitching inside. I may take it out later, who knows, but it is top stitch in place. It's all pressed. And now all I need to do is add the buttonholes and the buttons to this. So in order to do that, I'm going to try it on first and kind of mark the fullest part of my bust. I'm going to want to make sure there's a button there. And then I'm going to use this tool, the Simplex gauge, and I will use it to space out the rest of where I want my buttonholes. I definitely want one in this kind of corner area, and then it'll just depend like where my bust is from there, how I space them out from there down. As far as stitching the buttonholes and the buttons, I've got some other resources linked below, so make sure to check that out. Once you have that done, then you're done with your project. Make sure to check out some of the other Esma hacks that I have going on this month. Um, I show you how to change a neckline, and then this week we talked about how to add buttons to a shirt that didn't have buttons to begin with. And next week I'm going to be showing you how to make a dress out of this shirt pattern.